right, so in this lesson, um, I'm just going to do an overview of the four types of centers of triangles or their points of concurrency. So that is a circumcenter, incenter, centroid, and orthocenter. So not going too much into details with practice problems, just simply giving an overview of these um, centers of triangles. So what exactly is a point of concurrency? Well, that is simply when three or more lines intersect at a point, that means that they are concurrent and the point at which they intersect is the point of concurrency. So as we can see in this first image here, um, we don't have three lines that intersect. We have two lines here, here, and here. But there is no intersection where all three um, lines intersect. So these lines are not concurrent. But we can see in this second image, all three lines intersect at that same point P. So these lines are considered um, concurrent and their point of concurrency is point P. All right, so we have our four um, points of concurrency or centers of triangles here. The first one in yellow we see here is the circumcenter. They are created by perpendicular bisectors. So our perpendicular bisectors on this figure are XM, YM, and ZM. And we know that they are perpendicular bisectors because they cut each side in half into two uh, equal parts we see here. And they're perpendicular because we see these right angles here. So these are perpendicular bisectors. And with the circumcenter, it is equal distant from each vertex of the triangle. So since my circumcenter here is M, it is equal distant from each vertex. Therefore, we can conclude that AM right here is congruent to BM or equal rather, and it is also equal to CM because they are equal distant from uh, the circumcenter here. So all of those segments are congruent. Next, we have the end center. They are created by angle bisectors. And so our angle bisectors here are BM, uh, CM, and AM. And we know that they are angle bisectors because if we look here, we have these congruence marks in each vertex. So that shows that each angle is cut into two congruent um, parts. With the end center, which is M right here, it is equal distant from each side of the triangle. Therefore, we can conclude that XM is congruent to YM here, or equal, and it is equal to ZM. So all of these sides are equal. So if XM is 5, then MY would be 5, and MZ would also be 5. They are all the same measure. Next, we have the centroid. Centroid is created by medians, and medians are created by a vertex connected to the midpoint of the opposite side. So our medians here are uh, B, Z, all right, C, X, and A, Y because it go, it starts at a vertex and it goes to the opposite side, cutting that side into two equal parts. So we can see here with BZ, it cuts AC into two equal parts because we have these congruence marks. So that is a median. And we should note that um, when we're looking at the medians, so let's look at a, um, the line AY. We can see, so AM would be two thirds of AY. So AM, is two thirds of that entire median AY. Therefore, MY will be one third of AY. That's a three there. Also, we could say that AM is twice MY. So AM will be twice um, MY. So for example, if AM is four, right? MY would be 2 
because if it is twice, it is also half of it. Well, if, if it is twice, that will mean that my is half of it, um, of um, am. So these are our four uh, standards that we would go by when we're looking um, to find uh, the measure of medians. All right. And then last, we have the orthocenter that is created by altitudes. And our altitudes here are created by vertex connected to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular to that side. So my altitudes would be BZ, okay, because we start at B and we have this perpendicular, it's perpendicular because we have that right angle, all right. My next altitude would be uh, AY, all right, because vertex and it goes to the opposite side and it is uh, perpendicular. And the last one would be uh, CX. So those are my altitudes. All right, so these are my four points of concurrency, circumcenter, incenter, centroid, and orthocenter. All right, so can you answer the following? We want to write the term that best fits the description um, or these descriptions below. So the first one says a line, ray, or segment that divides a segment into two congruent parts at a 90 degree angle. And so we got some help here, 90 degree angle and two congruent parts. That would be a perpendicular bisector, all right? Next, it says a line ray or segment that divides into an angle into two congruent parts. So important information there where it divides an angle, that would be an angle bisector. All right, number three, a segment that connects the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So vertex, midpoint, that would be a median. Next, a segment that connects a vertex to the opposite side so that it creates a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle, vertex to the opposite side. Of course, that would be in altitude. Um, the next one, the point at which the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So now the next four will be um, those points of concurrency. That would be the circumcenter. So the important term here is perpendicular bisector in that point that they intersect. Uh, the next one, the point at which the angle bisectors intersect in a triangle. In center, important word here is angle bisector. Next, point at which the medians intersect. So medians is the important word here. Um, and the point at which they intersect would be the centroid. And then last, we have um, the altitudes, and I accidentally clicked the head, and that would be the orthocenter. All right, so let's look at these um, triangles here. So it says, based on the markings, classify each center as a circumcenter, incenter, centroid, or orthocenter. So because we have, so let's look at the first one here. Because we have these um, congruent angles here, right? That will make these angle bisectors, right? So what is the point of concurrency for angle bisectors? Of course, that would be the end center. All right, if we look here, these lines, they go from the uh, a vertex to the opposite side, and it is perpendicular, all right? So that would mean that these are altitudes. So what would be the point of concurrency for altitudes? That would be the orthocenter, which would be here, and then our end center here. All right, next, we have these lines that cut each side into two um, equal parts. So what would that be? That would be, or these lines would be medians. Point of concurrency for medians would be the centroid. And last, we have right angles here. So these lines are perpendicular and each side is cut into two equal parts, right? So that means that these are perpendicular, I'm gonna say perp bisectors. And what would be the point of concurrency 
for perpendicular bisectors, of course, that would be the circumcenter. All right. So let's do, um, you're going to do something on your own. And um, so let's see if you get them correct. All right. So why don't you try these on your own? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can name the point of concurrency for each of these uh, triangles here. All right, so hopefully you got uh, these uh, four centers of triangles correct. We have circumcenter, centroid, and center, and orthocenter. Okay, so we've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Uh, some related videos are centroid and orthocenter of triangles, as well as circumcenter and incenter of triangles, and I will link those at the end of this video. Um, if you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, thank you for learning with me.